Aptera stunned its most loyal supporters with an announcement almost no one saw coming. More than 50,000 reservation holders had been following every update, every prototype reveal, every engineering promise, and suddenly the company revealed it was walking away from one of the most radical ideas in modern electric vehicle design. The innovative hub motor system that was supposed to redefine efficiency was gone. In its place was something far more conventional. That single decision triggered a flood of questions across the EV world. Why abandon a technology that seemed perfectly aligned with Abtera's mission? Why not use DC motors like early electric vehicles did? And what does this pivot really tell us about the future of ultra-efficient transportation? To understand the answer, you have to start with a misconception that still floats around whenever electric motors are discussed. Some people assume DC motors are a simple, efficient solution that modern EVs somehow ignored. In reality, DC motors are a technological dead end for high-performance electric vehicles. They belong to an earlier era when control electronics were primitive and efficiency demands were far lower. Using a DC motor in a vehicle like Aptera would be like trying to power a modern data center with vacuum tubes. It technically works, but it completely misses the point of how far the technology has evolved. Traditional DC motors rely on brushes to transfer power to the rotating components. Those brushes physically rub against a commutator, which creates friction, heat, electrical noise, and sparks. Over time, they wear down and require maintenance or replacement. For a vehicle designed to operate quietly, efficiently, and with minimal servicing over decades, that alone is a deal breaker. Then there's efficiency. Even well-designed DC motors struggle to exceed the high 80% range. In a solar-assisted vehicle where every watt directly translates into usable miles, losing 10% of your energy before it even reaches the wheels is catastrophic. Weight and size compound the problem. To match the power output of modern AC-based motors, DC motors must be larger and heavier. Abtera's entire design philosophy revolves around eliminating unnecessary mass. When your aerodynamic drag is lower than almost anything ever put on public roads, adding weight undermines the very advantage you worked so hard to achieve. On top of that, modern EV features like regenerative braking, precise torque control, and advanced traction systems are far harder to implement with DC motors. They simply aren't designed for the level of control modern vehicles demand. So DC motors were never truly on the table, but what makes a Terra story compelling is that they didn't settle for the industry standard right away. Instead, they aimed even higher. When the company relaunched after its earlier collapse, it embraced a vision that sounded almost too good to be true. Motors inside the wheels themselves. No drive shafts, no differential, no traditional drivetrain, just direct power delivered exactly where it's needed. The appeal of hub motors was obvious. By placing motors directly in the wheels, Abtera could free up interior space and simplify the vehicle's layout. Independent motors on each wheel would allow advanced torque vectoring, improving both efficiency and handling. The torque figures were impressive, the packaging was elegant, and the concept aligned perfectly with Abtera's image as a company willing to rethink everything. For a while, it looked like that vision was going to become reality. Detailed partnerships were announced, technical specifications were shared, the community rallied around the idea, imagining a future where in-wheel motors became the new standard for ultra-efficient vehicles. On paper, it all made sense. Then, physics stepped in. Every vehicle is governed by the same unyielding rules of suspension dynamics. Engineers separate a vehicle's mass into sprung weight, which is supported by the suspension, and unsprung weight, which includes wheels, tires, brakes, and anything bolted directly to them. 
unsprung weight is the enemy of ride quality and handling. The heavier it is, the harder it becomes for the suspension to keep the tire planted on the road, especially over bumps and uneven surfaces. Hub motors dramatically increase unsprung weight. Even relatively light units add mass exactly where engineers fight hardest to remove it. The problem isn't subtle. Each pound added to unsprung weight has an outsized effect compared to weight added elsewhere. What looks manageable on a spec sheet becomes glaringly obvious in real-world driving. Reduced grip, harsher ride, increased tire wear, and higher stress on suspension components all follow. Abtera believed it could engineer its way around this challenge. Lightweight materials, custom suspension geometry, extensive testing, and advanced simulations were all part of the plan. The motors themselves were put through brutal durability testing. From the outside, it looked like the problem was under control. But development time kept slipping, costs climbed, integration grew more complex than anticipated, and while prototypes can tolerate compromises, production vehicles cannot. Every unresolved issue multiplies when you scale from a handful of test units to thousands of customer vehicles. Then came the announcement that changed everything. The launch edition would not use hub motors at all. Instead, Abtera would rely on a conventional inboard permanent magnet synchronous motor paired with an integrated inverter and reduction gear. The explanation was careful and measured. The timeline simply didn't allow continued development of the hub motor system without delaying customer deliveries indefinitely. Behind that statement was a convergence of realities. Financial pressure was mounting, manufacturing complexity becoming harder to justify. Integrating braking systems, thermal management, and crash considerations into hub motors added layers of risk. Even regulatory questions, despite Abtera's unique classification, introduced uncertainty that conventional drivetrains avoid entirely. The switch also meant sacrificing all-wheel drive, at least for now. The vehicle's extreme aerodynamic shape leaves no practical path to deliver power to the rear wheel using traditional methods. That loss disappointed some supporters, but others saw it as the necessary cost of actually putting vehicles on the road. Permanent magnet synchronous motors represent the opposite philosophy of hub motors. Instead of radical placement, they focus on maximizing efficiency, control, and reliability within a proven architecture. These motors achieve efficiencies approaching the theoretical limits of electric machines. They deliver high power density, precise torque control, and excellent regenerative braking performance. Most importantly, they are already deployed in massive numbers across the EV industry. From a systems perspective, this choice makes sense. An integrated motor, inverter, and gearbox simplifies packaging, reduces development risk, and leverages a supply chain that already exists. Thermal management becomes easier, reliability improves, costs fall. For a company trying to transition from ambitious startup to actual manufacturer, those advantages are difficult to ignore. The irony is that this conventional choice still enables extraordinary performance. The numbers remain impressive. Hundreds of miles of range from a modest battery. Solar panels adding meaningful daily driving without plugging in. Acceleration and top speed that comfortably meet real-world needs. All of it wrapped in a body with aerodynamics that remain unmatched. Zoom out, and Abtera's experience mirrors a broader pattern in the EV world. Many startups chase revolutionary hardware breakthroughs, only to discover that manufacturing, cost, and reliability are far harder problems than raw engineering. Some never recover, others pivot, adopting proven technologies while focusing their innovation where it truly matters. The deeper lesson isn't that hub motors are useless or that radical ideas should be avoided, it's that timing matters.
a technology can be theoretically superior and still be wrong for the moment. Perfect solutions that can't be delivered often lose to good solutions that actually reach customers. Abtera's story is not about rejecting innovation, it's about choosing which battles to fight. By letting go of hub motors, the company removed one of the largest barriers standing between concept and reality. That decision doesn't erase years of ambition or experimentation, it reframes them. So when people ask why Abtera doesn't use DC motors, the answer is straightforward. DC motors were never viable for a vehicle chasing extreme efficiency and longevity. When they ask why hub motors were abandoned, the answer is more nuanced, because physics, manufacturing, and economics eventually demand compromises even from the most visionary designs.